Yo, what is up, my sweet little garbanzo beans? Um, so this is for all of my little garbanzo beans who have a south node in Gemini. Um, me, me too, what's up? <laughs> um, oh yeah, this is Sinessa. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I just want to give a quick little rundown of kind of what how this reading works and what this is for. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, your south node in your natal chart is really thought to be um, an energy that you've already mastered. And for those of you who don't know what your south node is, by the way, I have included in the description box a link to a site where you can generate a free, free natal chart report. Um, I am not, you know, sponsored by nor affiliated with the site at all. I just like it. Um, so there's that, <laughs> you know, we're, we're, uh, we're an item, the site and I, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but yes, so your self note is kind of the energy that you've ostensibly already mastered. And this is why many people feel that in your natal chart, this is one of the major indications of past life energy. Now I want to mention that your past life energy um your excuse me your south node well slash past life energy doesn't have to denote the only past life that you've lived like only one or the most prominent necessarily but it's the one that's impacting this life the most um and so i just want to read off this lovely card so i picked the gemini card to represent y'all um and then the keywords here are curious communicative versatile, flexible, variety seeking, social, collaborative, brilliant, perceptive, uh, connected, vocal, adaptive, street smart, <laughs> mobile, studious, superficial, restless, and fidgety. Okay, so for folks who have Gemini South Node, um, you know this is these are my overthinkers these are you know this is kind of the energy of people who are very cerebral um people who are very in their heads all the time this also may kind of be for folks who are very very prone toward anxiety um and this isn't meant to you know i'm neither a physical nor a mental health professional so nothing talked about in my readings should be substitute for professional professional diagnosis treatment or advice but just saying um it tends to kind of go along with gemini south node um but folks who tend to be, you know, maybe a little bit more anxious, a little bit more up in their head, um, folks who are also very clever, very, um, very like mentally adaptable, who uh, can get a lot of ideas, who are creative problem solvers, um, you know, this is like, um, this is also folks who tend to be. Uh, who, who can be very good with social media or like with social media marketing. Um, this can kind of talk about that energy a little bit, but with having Gemini in your South node, um, this can really talk about, like I said, you've, you've mastered this kind of cerebral energy, but you might kind of, you might kind of get stuck in your head a lot. And another issue that can kind of go along with Gemini South node is this, um, this overthinking quality or this, um, this struggle with decision making, right? So this is kind of part and parcel to some of the, you know, every zodiac sign has light and shadow, right? And one of the kind of shadowy attributes of Gemini energy is that while they're, you know, ruled by Mercury, very intelligent and very uh, fluid and flexible in their thinking and their thought process, um, this can also lead the, you know, lead to more of that shadowy Gemini energy, which can kind of be um, indecisiveness, can kind of be, you know, changing their minds on a dime. And this is why I think a lot of people, you know, Gemini kind of gets a bad rap sometimes as being like two-faced or gaslighty. Um, and you know, any sign, any one of any sign can be like that. Um, but I think this is why Gemini in particular gets a bad rap because, you know, the light side of this is that there is this ability, this expansive mindset, this ability to think of um, something from every single angle. And with all of these different ideas and these different um, conceptualizations of, of a situation, your mind may naturally change, right? As you come up with new ideas, new perspectives, you see the situation differently, your mindset may naturally shift. Um, but you know, because we're talking about with South and North, so I can't speak. Oh my gosh. With South and North, I did it again, you guys. Okay. Say it with me. Ready? With South and North nodes. Did we get it? 
I think we got it. Um, with south and north nodes. <laughs> I'm going to just talk like I'm a GPS for the rest of the night. <laughs> you have reached your destination. North node. Um, anyway, <laughs> with south and north nodes, the whole entire idea, because they're always oppositional signs on the wheel of the zodiac, is that if you've already mastered that south node energy, um, you may also be kind of prone or default to your south node sometimes. So like I said, you know, I myself am south node in Gemini, and I know this this is me to a T. Um you know, where I, I can, you know, struggle to, I can struggle with overthinking and struggle with making decisions as a result of that. But um, my whole entire point is that, you know, you might find that you default to your south node a little bit. Um, and this is why your north node is always placed on the opposite end of the, the wheel of the zodiac is that the whole entire goal is to move toward your north node energy and embrace that, you know, move toward that and detach from your south node in order to create balance, right? Um, so, you know, because this is in a position where, um, and this doesn't have to be all the time, you know, but maybe this is under times of stress in life or really big shifts in life. You might kind of end up swinging a little bit more toward your south node energy and just need to move toward your north node in order to find balance. So with Gemini, you might find that south node in Gemini can lead to, like I said, indecisiveness, anxiety. Um, it can lead to analysis paralysis. Oh, did you guys hear that? Those are my knuckles. They sound like Rice Krispies. They're like, ka 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 it's like somebody's throwing poppers out, but I'm literally just moving my hands. Oh my god. Um, but yeah, so this is kind of a, a brief snapshot of what South Node and Gemini energy might kind of look like. Um, so I'm actually going to pull a past life card to get a little bit more information about this past life energy that's coming through that might be affecting you now. So. Oh, wow. Okay, um, so everybody else has gotten one, but three just came flying out for you guys. So I'm actually going to take it. Um, that's so funny that you guys got vows. Okay, so for giggles, as I was setting this up, I was shuffling this deck, and I wanted to make sure it was really well shuffled, so I just, like, pulled the card out, and I pulled this, and I was like, hmm, okay. And I thought about keeping it, but I didn't. Interesting. So you guys got vows. You guys got communal living. I'm going to try to stack them all as best I can. I apologize if it's not great. And you got imprisonment or slavery. Okay. Okay. So here is kind of what I am feeling. I'm going to try. I'm really sorry. This is not super aesthetically pleasing. Aesthetic is not my strong suit. Let's see what we can do. <laughs> this is so bad, you guys. <laughs> all right. Hang on. <laughs> this is so bad. Okay. <laughs> that's so bad <coughs> oof excuse me okay so with these coming through what I'm kind of picking up on this past life energy and this is a really specific message so if it resonates that's great if not that's okay I feel like for many of you there was a situation with this communal living where you were living with other people obviously um, and I feel like it started out with your your beliefs being like you have this one idea so it's something I find really interesting right I was just reading about this recently where a way of looking at you know because the opposite of Gemini is Sagittarius a way of looking at these is like Gemini is almost more like concrete the concrete knowledge that we can have right whereas a Sagittarian energy is more like abstract knowledge I also call it you know this is kind of more intellectual and Sagittarian energy is more knowledge at the spiritual level or from the wisdom of our experiences right it's at the soul um so I kind of almost feel like this coming out there was this situation that involved living with other people and I kind of feel like this is like in a compound or a commune um but not, you know, not necessarily exclusively. There's a situation where you're living with other people, and I feel like in this past life, you had, like, a very, like, black and white view of this situation. And I kind of get the feeling that it's... I, I feel like for some of you, it, it started off as viewing this as, like, um, 
like a situation that was helpful to all people that was what i'm hearing is abundant for all people right so maybe like a mutually symbiotic relationship um you know and then your your mind shift was shifted or there was information that was given to you in a past life that changed your perception right um of this situation where it's this recognition of like oh this isn't as this isn't like a you know a paradise for everybody or this isn't as good as i thought it was for everybody and it's kind of the energy i'm picking up for is like if it's not if it's not good for the collective it's not good that's not good enough right and so i feel like there is a situation where you're in the past like in a past life your eyes were open to the reality of the situation and this could go vice versa too where there's this idea of like um you know oh this this particular situation or system or structure is unjust and actually finding out that you know it you know maybe thinking of it like as it's like um like belittling and then actually finding out that there's there's more value in it than you thought i'm trying to find a good example so like the way that this might go the other way right let's say um somebody who's in a polyamorous relationship for example and and feeling like you know let's i'm just totally throwing out an example here by the way um you know a situation where like maybe it's like a man has multiple wives right you know it may have been a situation where you had viewed it like oh my gosh this is like this is like domestic slavery for his wives and then there's like this shift in perspective where you're seeing the value in this communal living but whatever it is i feel like there is this big shift in a past life where you either thought it was great and then saw that there was a lot of upheaval and and a lot of difficulty and a lot of uh, like taking advantage of other people or the other way around where you thought this situation this system this um institution was like and this also could be like in a past life this could be something where maybe in a past life you didn't want to get married because it was like this idea of like you know being stuck being imprisoned or you know like there's like this institution that's oppressive and then there's this idea like maybe you went through this experience where you did take this vow and then there's this you know really seeing the value in having somebody you know having a partner um if that's you know what you would want and somebody who is there for you and like looking out for you but whatever it is there's this idea where there's this perception around the way a group of people live that totally shifted and changed and i feel like with this vows card it caused you to change in a past life it caused you in a past life to change your perception and this is playing out in this life because this puts your north node in sagittarius where i feel like you are being challenged in this life to have expansive experiences in order to to gain that shift in perspective that expansion even further um than you had prior so that's super duper interesting um so let me see sorry i'm trying to bump the camera i'm going to pull y'all a numerology guidance card to get a little bit more of an idea of where this might be playing out oh my gosh <laughs> yeah 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 okay um so y'all got spiritual career and you know for some of you as well this may also be where in the past in this past life this may be talking about like a religious institution it doesn't necessarily have to be like communal like you're actually living in the same place this could be a community where or, you know a communal setting in the place you live right so maybe in this past life another thing i could see is that there might be this perception around a religious institution um where either you know there was like this almost like um like this blind support of it and then there's like maybe a lot of corruption that was discovered and you you had vowed when you were reincarnated into this life to challenge your perceptions around religion and spirituality or vice versa this may be kind of like um, a situation where perhaps there was a lot of corruption or seemingly like a lot of corruption in um you know in the local religious settings that you were exposed to and then 
there was this experience that you had that shifted your perspective where you could see some value in that community but either way this experience was this this perception shift was so moving for you that it caused you to make this vow and this may have been in your past life but especially playing out in this life to take a vow to come back and experience this differently and with putting your north node in sagittarius with the spiritual career card you may find um, a lot of you may be very, very drawn in toward having a spiritual career or toward a spiritual practice or modality. Um, and this may come from this vow to explore that further, right? And this may be kind of, I feel like a continuation of this past life energy. It's really like this, um, like vowing to keep exploring this, this shift in perspective, this spiritual shift in perspective. So I really like that. That's really, really cool. Um, I'm just going to shift this over here. Yeah, you can still see it. Cool. So I'm going to pull y'all some tarot. This is the Herb Crafters Tarot, by the way, in case you're interested. All my decks are going to be linked. It is absolutely freaking gorgeous. I just wanted you to know that. No, it's this way. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Jumping out. Wait, is it like that? It's like this. Okay. And then I just need a second. Oh, sorry. I'm trying really hard not to bump the camera. It's super hard. I have such a hard time shuffling on camera. Okay. So let's see what you get. You have, ooh, the Eight of Wands. Beautiful. You have the King of Pentacles reversed. Oh, and the Emperor Upright. Okay, so we have Aries energy and then Masculine Earth energy, so Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. This could involve another person, but really what I'm seeing here is that I feel like there's a lot of passion. There's a lot of desire to pursue this spiritual path, right? There's a lot of... Um, because the Eight of Wands is just very fast-moving energy. The Wands are all about the soul. They're all about the spiritual energy. So there's just like this desire to pursue this. Um, I do feel like with the King of Pentacles reverse, there's going to be some issues in this lifetime around um, sustaining your material well-being while you pursue this spiritual, uh, this quest for spiritual understanding or the spiritual career. There may be concerns about that um, or you may have struggles from time to time. But with the Emperor, I feel like ultimately you will overcome this and when you come out the other side you come out on top right the emperor is always very in control he's all four of the kings kind of rolled into one um so you may find that you struggle a little bit with your your material you know i don't want to say your material well-being but you may struggle a little bit establishing yourself in this spiritual career and I do want to say too with having south node in Gemini this is third house energy so this means you've mastered this element of communication you've mastered this mercury energy so to speak so I do feel like as you are growing spiritually along your path and this is gonna look different for everybody um, this may really kind of talk about as as you learn more and you you really like with this eight of wands you move forward in passionate pursuit of spiritual knowledge you really have the skills to be able to communicate about that and once you have gained all of this knowledge and you have moved forward and you have you have gathered that um that's really going to be that missing like that missing element the key to unlocking this financial um well-being right this you know financial security that you're looking to accrue so let's pull you guys some more cards and see what we get oh, whoops. ah bumping my camera i'm trying so hard not to sorry it's just really hard to shuffle on camera but that's okay <laughs> sorry i end up humming way more than i mean to <laughs> okay so you guys got the five of swords reversed nice the oh the two of wands reversed okie dokie and then the nine of wands upright okay so what i'm kind of seeing here is i do feel like this path with the five of swords reversed this path might mean that you do have to leave behind um 
both people that might be very challenging to you there you might encounter a lot of people that try to challenge you right because you have this vows card which is like the spiritual promise the spiritual service you might have a lot of people in your life that don't understand that and that try to challenge your beliefs or challenge your conviction is really what i'm feeling right um I don't know why too with these two cards something else i'm getting is prison ministry is just what came through and this doesn't have to be like of any particular one religion but you may feel really drawn to give spiritual counsel in a in a, a, like a setting where you're giving counsel to um incarcerated individuals i don't know why that just came out but i wanted to put that out there but yeah um you know, this may kind of cost you some relationships, but because this is the Five of Swords, um, it's important to really note that anybody that is, is kind of moved out of your path along the way um, is likely not somebody who, you know, the thing about the Five of Swords, whenever this involves other people, is to me, this is always the type of energy of people who are committed to misunderstanding you. Um, and that's something that's important to know is that if you... If you encounter people who can't at least even understand your desire to find truth, to find, um, you know, to find that, that, to find what is real and meaningful and significant to you on a spiritual level, um, and what is true to you at, a, at the soul, um, if, if people are committed to not even at least understanding that need, that drive, then they're probably not going to be a supportive asset or part of your path moving forward but this is also because the swords can talk about the mental body and communication this is also really challenging you to leave those troublesome thoughts behind right and this is again part of that gemini south node to leave these troublesome thoughts behind that may be um kind of stifling your growth a little bit is really what i'm getting because with this two of wands right here as well you have a choice to make um, about what path you want to take at, at the soul, at a spiritual level. And with the Nine of Wands, first of all, I feel like um, this group with the Nine of Wands may have lived many lives before, or this issue may have been very prevalent in multiple lifetimes. This is, with the Nine of Wands, you've gone 20 rounds on this, right? You know, this is kind of like you're tired, you're wounded, you've been through the ringer, and you're trying to kind of, you know, get through that last leg of the race. So you are very close to closing in on these lessons wrapped up in this energy. And your team wants you to know that and wants you to um, stay determined and persevering. Um, but with these two coming out together, I feel like at the soul, you've already made this decision to pursue this path, however this unfolds in your life personally, right? So you've already made this decision to to look for, you know, to take this quest, to take this vow, to really dig into this, um, what is true for you spiritually and, and what your, your soul's purpose is in this lifetime. Um, I feel like you've already made that choice and it's kind of like come hell or high water, I'm finishing what I started is the energy here. Um, so I just want to pull you guys a couple of cards of advice real quick and then I think I'll send you on your way, my little love bugs. Okay, so you guys got all oh, the two of cups. I love it. Where can I put this? Sorry, it's like all stacked on each other. I will get a, a more expansive setup. Oh, in the world. Oh my god, you guys. I couldn't have made this better. See, this is perfect. Yes, exactly what we were just talking about, by the way, with the world. This is like, I'm going to finish what I started. I'm actually just going to hold these up together. So with the world, this is very much like, I'm going to finish what I started. Come hell or high water with a butterfly here. I'm going to transform. I'm going to come out of the cocoon. I'm going to make it vibrantly so with all of the colors here as well. This is like total chakra activation and alignment too. So this is like at the soul. I'm going to, you know, this is also known as like the graduation card. So this is like, I'm going to learn these lessons. I'm going to achieve this growth. I'm going to learn. I'm going to know. I'm going to experience. And like this is, I'm going to make this my own, right? 
Um, and with the Two of Cups, first of all, this could talk about a very special soulmate, a very special counterpart for some of you who is going to help you in that process. But this also talks about this, this process of coming into alignment at the soul. This talks about this process of, um, you know, especially if you, if you are pursuing a spiritual career, this is talking really about you coming into alignment at the soul with spirit, with your purpose, with your divinity. And I feel like um, with your soul purpose in a way that may have evaded you in this past life, or again, this might feel like you it was set up for you in this past life, and now it's time to bring it on home. Um, so there's this really, really beautiful element of closure and having it come out with these two together. This is like such beautiful soul growth and soul alignment. And again, I feel like, you know, potentially bringing you a soulmate or soul family members that are going to help support you in that process. So this is gorgeous. I love this for you guys. I'm super excited for you. Um, I think that's everything I have for you. I, if you are looking to have your natal chart read, please feel free to check out the link in the description box. I do, um, I do offer natal chart readings. If you're interested in having this reading done for you personally, um, please feel free to DM me. Um, I'm happy to make custom readings, and if enough people want them, I will add them to my shop. Um, also feel free to check out my shop listings, um, or my, the link to my Etsy shop. Um, I have a bunch of different readings, so feel free to peruse and see if any of those suit your needs. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been an absolute delight getting to read for you lovely folks, and I hope to see you again in the future. Bye, love bugs. <laughs>